Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a private network within Hyper-V. This is important for your home lab as well as uh, a test environment that you might have at your place of work because there will be things that you are going to want to test that could potentially cause problems on a production network. For example, let's say you're in your home lab and you're working on a certification and one of the objectives is working on DHCP, having to configure that. So if you did this on your production network, both at home or, or at your place of employment, you have, uh, you're pr probably are already running DHCP um, on that network and if you add another DHCP server and this server is handing out whatever it is you've needed to configure for your um, for your training lab then this could wreak havoc on that network you'll have devices getting not sure you know which DHCP server from which they will get their their address and all you know havoc will occur and you'll break everything but if you have this in an environment that's completely siloed off, you don't have to worry about that. No traffic goes between the networks, no broadcast, or in, 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 including no traffic. I mean, no broadcast traffic is going through the networks. So therefore, you can work with DHCP to your heart's content and not break production. So to be able to do this in a Hyper-V environment, as you can see, we're in Hyper-V Manager here. And um, let me note that there, there are a couple different ways of doing this. If you would like to use PowerShell to make this happen, by all means. For uh, this tutorial, I'll be, I'll be using the GUI. So within Hyper-V Manager, we'll click Virtual Switch Manager. And this will list on the left-hand side any switches you might have configured. If you haven't configured any, there's probably a default switch. Um, this is client-side Hyper-V in Windows 10 Professional, and it comes with a default switch. But we're going to create our own here. The type of virtual switch we want to create is a private switch. External switch, as the name implies, is going to be associated with one of the physical NICs on your machine, which means any virtual machines that are attached to this virtual switch are going to be a part of whatever network is um, attached to your, your physical NIC, which defeats the purpose of what we're wanting to do. Internal is interesting because this will allow traffic to flow from your host machine to your VMs, but not allow traffic out to the rest of, of the network. But for what we're wanting to do, we want to have something completely siloed off for just the VMs to use. And as you can see from the description there, that's what a private um, switch does. On another level with the, the private switch, you can have multiple private switches which will all be siloed off to one another. So where it says that creates a virtual switch that can only be used by the virtual machines that run on this physical computer, that, that is true, but it's also specific to that private switch. So we're going to cr click Create Virtual Switch, and in honor of our little Server 2019 test VMs here, we're going to name it Foo Switch. Let's make this go in here. And connection type, we're going to keep that at Private Network. And this creates the switch. If you want to verify that it is actually there, you can click Virtual Switch Manager again, and you will see Foo Switch in our list of virtual switches. So the next step is we need to attach this, um, uh, attach our VMs to this switch. So that way, the NIC that's configured on the VMs will be sending traffic to this virtual switch. And to do that, we're going to right-click the VM and click Settings. We'll go down to Network Adapter. And where it says virtual switch, we see it's not connected now. And we're going to choose the switch that we created, foo switch. We're not going to worry about VLAN ID or bandwidth management. We'll click OK. And if you want to verify that, you can click settings, either right click the VM or click settings here, and you'll see network adapter foo switch. We'll do the same thing for our second server, foo number two. Settings, network, adapter change that to foo switch and click OK. So now we're going to go to our VMs. These are running server 2019 core so we just have the the command line and just like with creating the virtual switch there are several different ways of doing this. We're going to use the uh, text-based interface so if you find yourself at just a command line on a Windows server that doesn't have a GUI you can type sconfig sure this is getting my keyboard input. There we go. And that brings up the text-based interface. And we will type 8 for network settings. 
we have one network adapter available. We'll type one there. We're going to set the network adapter address. We're going to click or click. We're going to select static. We could do DHCP, but on this particular private network, we're not going to have a DHCP server. So we click static. We're going to enter an address. I'll do 192.168.1.10. Keep the subnet mask um, 255, 255, 255, 0. And even though there's not going to be a actual default gateway on this network. I'm going to put one in anyway because part of our testing to verify that, that this is functioning uh, we'll, we'll use the default gateway address for that. And that's it. We're gonna you can see the NIC settings have changed there. You see the IP address. We're not going to set up DNS. We don't need that for right now. So we're going to go back to the main menu. Now, this is a fresh install of Server 2019. Other than what we have just done, we've done no other configuration. And to, to test our connectivity, we're going to use ping. And by default, this um, is disabled within Server 2019. So to enable it, we're going to click number four or select number four for configure remote management. We are going to select number three for configure server response to ping. And it's going to ask us if we want to allow remote machines to ping the server. If you don't have a mouse, you can just hit enter or the space bar here, or you can click yes. I'm going to hit the space bar for that. And it will say successfully configured to allow ping. And we're back to that menu. So we're going to choose selection four, go back to the main menu, and then selection 15 to go to the command line. And we'll do clear just to whoop, CLS to get back to the command line. We're going to do the same thing on server number two to get to the text-based user interface. We're going to do sconfig and eight for network settings, one for the index number for the uh, network adapter, one to set the adapter address. It will be a static address. We're going to do 192.168.1.11 for this server. Keep the default subnet mask. We're going to put that same gateway in. And you can see that the network settings are as we designed them. We're not going to use DNS for this. And we're going to make sure that our computer is going to respond to pings. to the main menu and to the command line. All right, so let's go back to server one. We'll do IP config and we see that our, um, our address and such is there. We'll do the same for server two, IP config. We see the, the address is there. So theoretically, we should be able to ping between these two servers because they are both attached to the switch and you can verify that by clicking file settings and you'll see again network adapter foo switch we'll verify that on the other server as well file settings foo switch and so let's see what happens famous last words in IT right let's see what happens so we're going to do ping 192.168.110 and lo and behold we get echo replies from that and let's go to this side even though let me cancel that. I'm sure it's going to work. So we'll do ping 192.168.1.11. And lo and behold, we get echo replies. Now, before uh, I mentioned the importance of this being a private network, this cannot touch the, the rest of, of my network in any sort of way. And so I specifically chose this particular um, subnet 192.168.1.0 um, prefix length 24 because th th this is what I'm, I'm currently running at home. So if I were to ping the default gateway, this is going to fail. Even though my default gateway um, that I have here on my home network is 192.168.1.1, I'm actually going to bring a Another window over, I'm going to bring over a PowerShell window. I'm going to ping my default gateway from PowerShell. This is PowerShell that's running on my, my host device. Also, my IP address for this is 192.168.1.55. 
this will fail if I were to try to ping 1.55 that's going to fail because a it, 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 it can't find anything because this switch is completely siloed off only thing that that, that can communicate to it oh, we got some loud sounds out in the parking lot might have heard that car there anyway um, all traffic is just going to communicate to whatever is attached to the switch so the power of that private switch is you truly have your own sandbox you can do whatever you want you can break stuff and it's not going to to affect your actual network at any time you can go and change the type of switch that the network adapter is attached to so if you eventually want to bring this into your production network by all means you can do that but for testing purposes, you, you'll probably want to try out stuff first in that private network. If you found this video useful or, 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 or just in general that you liked it, make sure that, that, that you click like for this video. And also, if you like the content in general and, and want to learn more about IT or music as well, I've, I've, I've done a video or so on, on music topics, make sure that you click subs subscribe for the channel. You can also head to EJSLLC.com, learn a little bit about more of what I do, or if you would like to en engage me to, to help with some IT issues that you might be having or have questions about music stuff, you can, you can ask that there. Also, feel free to leave comments in, in the channel, questions about how this will work or, or um, comments about other ways of being able to do the same thing. I always welcome feedback. Thank you for taking the time to, to watch and listen, and I hope it was useful for you and you learned a little bit about how to do private networking within Hyper-V Manager. See you next time.